The year is 1958. Ford already has a V8 called the Y Block, which was introduced just four years prior in 1954. But Ford knows that engine has top end oiling issues. Not only that, but the Y Block could only get so big. Ford wanted to offer a better engine design with the ability to go larger. Enter the Ford FE engine. In this engine episode, we will cover the 332, 352, 361, 390, 406, 410, 427, and 428 engines. The 429 is a totally different engine family. It's important to note, we are not getting into all of the horsepower figures. We are going to go from base horsepower to max horsepower, and we are not going to cover all of the variants because we will literally be here all day with the 390, especially like the 428, they made lots of different variations of these engines. It's also important to note that specifications such as bore and stroke sizes may be rounded. It's also important to note that Ford not only made the FE, they also made an engine family called the FT for Ford trucks. We are not getting into the Ford truck engines on this episode. We're going to have a separate engine episode for that. FT engines, displacements, 330, 359, 360-361, 389, and 391 are not featured in this episode because they are considered FT engines. People will say the 360 is an FE engine, which it technically is, but it was found in the Ford F series trucks, and that's why it's not listed with these engines. Introduced in 1958 and would be produced until 1976, the FE engine was a big block engine design. What does FE stand for? I was always told that it stood for Ford Edsel, but sources conflict on what it actually stands for. Some sources will say Ford Experimental, other sources would say Ford Engine. I was always taught that it was stood for Ford Edsel. The FE engine family is also considered a Y block design because of the cylinder block casting. It goes below the crankshaft center line, providing great rigidity and support to the crankshaft bearings. The Ford FE used a conventional wedge shaped combustion chamber inside the head. The distributor was mounted in front. Cylinder heads were narrow, which required intake manifolds to also be part of the valve cover area with push rod reaching rocker arms through it. Intake also acted as a valley cover. Introduced in 1958, 332 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8, 5.4 liters. It's good for anywhere between 145 to 265 horsepower at 4,600 RPM, 360 pound feet or 488 newton meters at 2800 rpm with a bore of 3.6 inches and a stroke of 3.6 inches compression was 8.4 to 1 featured four main bearings built of cast iron this engine was used between the years of 1958 and 1959 it was mostly used in the edsel in 1958 it was exported engine it was also used in the fairlane it used mechanical lifters until about mid-year in 58, and then they switched to hydraulic. Also introduced in 1958 as part of the interceptor line of V8 engines and was a replacement for the Lincoln Y block, 352 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8, 5.8 liters. It's good for anywhere between 235 all the way up to 360 horsepower at 46 to 6,000 RPM, up to 380 pound-feet or 515 newton meters at 4,000 RPM with a bore of 4 inches and a stroke of 3.5 inches. Compression was anywhere between 8.9 to 10.2 to 1. Five main bearings. Years this engine was used from 1958 through 1966 and it was a staple for Ford. It could be found in just about anything. The Thunderbird, the Galaxy. Hypo version came in 1960 in the Galaxy. That was the most powerful one, the 360 horsepower one, 1960. 
Also introduced the 1958 361 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8 5.9 liters. It's good for 303 horsepower at 4,600 RPM, 390 pound feet or 529 Newton meters at 2,400 RPM with a bore of 4.1 inches and a stroke of 3.5 inches. Compression was 10 and a half to one. Five main bearings, for Venturi, the years that this engine was used was between the years of 1958 and 1959, mostly found in the Edsel Ranger Pacer Villager. In 1959, this engine goes by the name of Super Express V8. Another staple for Ford was introduced in 1961, 390 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8 6.4 liters. It produced anywhere between 201 all the way up to 401 horsepower at 4,400 RPM, 430 pound feet or 580 Newton meters at 3,500 RPM with a bore of 4.05 inches and a stroke of 3.785 inches. Compression could be anywhere between 8.9 to 11 to 1. Five main bearings. The years this engine was used was 1961 through 1971 in cars. It would be produced in trucks until 1976. It could be found in just about everything. It was the most common FE engine Ford ever made. The 390 was the last engine in the first generation. The first engine in the second generation required a new block casting design to support a larger bore and thicker walls. It's important to note, there are two versions of the 406. B-code Thunderbird 406 used an aluminum dual plane intake manifold with a single Holley four barrel carburetor with 600 CFM and the more powerful G-code aluminum intake offered three two-barrel Holley carburetors with a combined 840 CFM. Introduced in 1962 and would only be offered for two years, 406 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8 6.6 .6 liters. It's good for anywhere between 385 to 405 horsepower, 5,800 RPM, up to 448 pound feet or 607 Newton meters at 3,500 RPM with a bore of 4.1 inches and a stroke of 3.8 inches. Compression was 11.41 to one, five main bearings. Years, this engine was offered from 1962 to 1964, had solid lifters and could be found in the galaxy. Introduced in 1966, called the Marauder V8. 410 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8 6.7 liters. It's good for 330 horsepower, 4600 RPM, 444 pound feet, or 602 Newton meters at 2800 RPM with a bore of 4.05 inches and a stroke of 3.98 inches. Compression was 10 and a half to 1. The years this engine was used was between 1966 and 1967. It could be found in Mercury products such as the Monterey and Park Lane. Don't get this confused with the 410 cubic inch displacement MEL engine. Nothing interchanges between these two, two totally different engines from different engine families. In 1963, Ford would introduce an absolute legend, 427 cubic inch displacement. It could either be had as a top oiler or a side oiler. True displacement was 425.98 cubic inch displacement, but Ford liked the sound of 427 better and seven liters. Seven liters was max displacement allowed by race organizations back in the day. The block was made of cast iron with a thickened deck to withstand higher compression. Cylinders were cast using clove leaf molds. 427 used solid lifters with the exception of 1968 going to hydraulic. Introduced in 1963 as a top oiler and the top oiler was on offer until 1965 when they came out with the side oiler. And all that really means is Top oilers sent oil to the top center first, whereas the side oilers sent oil along a passage located on the lower side first. 
427 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8 7 liters. It's good for anywhere between 390 to 425 horsepower, 6,000 RPM, 480 pound feet, or 651 newton meters at around 3,500 RPM with a bore of 3.785 inches and a stroke of 4.232 inches. Years this engine was used, it was a top oiler from 1963 to 1965. After 1965, it was a side oiler and would be produced until mid-year 1968. It's also important to note that this engine got a forged steel crankshaft after 1965. In 1964, Ford decided to up the ante on the 427. Dennis Collins would say this engine is... Holy grail. Many will say that this was Ford's best engine ever. 90 Day Wonder also goes by the name of 427 Cammer, used a 427 side oiler block, and it was Ford's answer to the Chrysler 426 Hemi. This special 427 was built for NASCAR, and ironically, NASCAR would ban these special engines from racing because they wasn't quote unquote used in a car that you could buy from Ford as an actual stock car production model, which really questions what NASCAR is doing today because none of those cars can be bought. Anyway, these 427s used mostly cast iron heads, although aluminum heads were available. Roller chain cam drive with a six foot long timing chain. Revisions were made to the oiling system and cross bolted main bearing caps were added to handle the RPM stress. This engine featured hemispherical combustion chambers, single overhead cam on each head, camshaft mounted rocker arms. These engines were essentially hand built. And although there aren't any production numbers available for how many engines they built, Ford estimates less than 500 were made. 427 cubic inch displacement, single overhead cam, V8, seven liters. It's good for 616 horsepower at 7,000 RPM, perhaps more. 515 pound feet or 698 Newton meters at 3,800 RPM. Bore and stroke sizes are the same. Compression is 12 to one. Years 1964 for the 1965 season produced until 1967. As great and as legendary as the 427 was, it proved to be very expensive to produce because even with the slightest shift happening when casting the cores, the block would be unusable. So Ford went back to the drawing block and came up with the 428 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8. It produced anywhere between 340 to 360 horsepower between 4,600 and 5,400 RPM, up to 462 pound-feet, or 626 Newton meters at 2,800 RPM, with a bore of 4.13 inches and a stroke of 3.8 inches. Years this engine was used was between 1966 and 1970. Could be found in the Thunderbird, the Mustang, the Cougar, Ford made different variations of the 428. In 1968, Ford would introduce the 428 Cobra Jet. The Cobra Jet engine featured additional webs casted into the main bearing saddles. 428 cubic inch displacement Cobra Jet V8, seven liters. It's good for anywhere between 335 to 405 horsepower, 5,200 RPM, 470 pound feet, or 637 Newton meters at 3,400 RPM with a bore and stroke of the same 4.13 inches on the bore side and 3.98 inches on the stroke side. Compression was 10.6 to one years. The Cobra Jet version of the 427 was offered from 1968 to 1970. Could be found in the Cougar, Torino, Cyclone, GT500KR. Introduced in 1969, 428 Super Cobra Jet. It used the same top end as the Cobra Jet. The crankshaft and connecting rods were strengthened with cap screws instead of bolts for greater durability, built to withstand higher RPMs. It could produce anywhere between 335 to 360 horsepower, 5,400 RPM, 440 pound-feet, or 597 Newton meters at 
3,400 RPM with a bore of 4.13 inches and a stroke of 3.98 inches. Compression was 10.6 to 1. Years 1969 through 1970 could be found in the Torino. Cars like that. In the mid-70s, Ford was working on a replacement for the FE engine because the FE was 20 years old at that point. The 385 series would replace the FE engine, which had displacements of 370, 429, and 460. But that is honestly an engine episode for another day. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather. In the first scenario, would you rather have... 1960 Ford Galaxy with the 352 V8, 360 horsepower, or 1962 Ford Thunderbird with a 390 V8, 340 horsepower, or 1966 Mercury Park Lane with the 410 V8. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Moving on to the second scenario, 1967 Ford Thunderbird with a 428 V8 or 1968 Ford Torino with a 390 V8 or a 1970 Mustang with a 390 V8. Once again, I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have your comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. I call it the After Party. It gives you the opportunity to share your rides, stories, experiences. Anything car related is totally shareable on there. If you'd like to send me an email, something more private, maybe you don't have Facebook or, or whatever, send me an email. All of it will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section. And until next time, toodaloo! He's got to wear his goggles because the snow really flies. And he's cruising every pad with a little surprise.